O Canada Conversations are a creation of IOM, made available under the Creative Commons 3.0 IGO. Please refer to the text of the audiobook for the copyright mark and the full legal code. Funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Financé par Immigration, Refugees et Citoyenneté Canada. O Canada Conversations, Dialogue Number 23. Laws in Canada. The following dialogue is related to Unit 1, Overview of Canada from the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. For more information, refer to the following units of the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. 1.15. Laws in Canada. 1.16. Illegal in Canada. 1.17. Legal in Canada. 1.18. Family Dynamics Sadia and Obasi attend an informational session about what is legal in Canada and what is not. A police officer speaks to the group about laws in Canada and answers questions about the law, including domestic violence and divorces. Sadia, Obasi, and other newcomers to Canada are in an orientation room. While they are waiting for the session to start, Sadia and Obasi talk to each other. Hi, Obasi. How have you been doing? Hi, Sadia. I have been busy with my children. Your advice has helped. I am glad I was of help. There will be a police officer speaking in the session today. I have never met a police officer in Canada. I am a bit nervous. I have heard police officers here are generally friendly and approachable. There is the police officer. The police officer walks into the orientation room and starts the session. Hello, everyone. My name is Officer Martin. It is nice to meet you all. Today, I am going to talk about the laws of Canada. It is important for you to listen carefully because some laws may be different from those in the countries where you previously lived. We have three levels of law in Canada. Federal, provincial and territorial laws, and municipal. The first category is federal laws. Federal laws such as those concerning immigration and income taxes apply to everyone living in Canada. Provincial and territorial laws vary by province or territory. Examples are laws concerning housing, health, education, and family. Municipal laws apply in a particular town or city. They might include laws about noise, smoking, littering, or parking a car. Police officers in Canada, like me, are here to make sure that everyone follows these laws. We work with the community to keep everyone safe, investigate crimes, provide assistance in emergency situations, and help crime victims. What happens when people do not follow the laws? When people do not follow the laws, we can arrest them and charge them with an offence under the law. But it is important to remember that under Canadian law, people are presumed innocent until proven guilty. Everyone, including you, is responsible for knowing and understanding the laws and the consequences if they break the law. If anyone breaks a law in Canada, there can be serious consequences, such as a fine or time in jail. Thank you for the explanation, officer. As a newcomer, although I understand that I need to follow the laws in Canada, sometimes I worry that I may not know all the laws. What are some common examples of things you can get fined for doing in Canada? That is an excellent question. Does anyone know of things you can get fined for in Canada? Oh, I know one. You are not allowed to drive without wearing a seatbelt or drive while distracted. You are correct. 
all motor vehicle drivers and passengers must wear a seat belt that is securely fastened and properly adjusted. What about if my friend is sitting in the passenger seat and I am talking to them while driving? If you are driving safely and not getting distracted, you cannot be fined for talking to another person with you in the car while driving. Texting on your phone while driving is a different story. That is considered distracted driving. This is an illegal act, and you will be fined if you are caught doing this. There are other illegal actions that result in fines. For instance, smoking in public places like indoor restaurants or fishing or hunting without a license. What are the crimes that would result in jail time? Some more serious offenses that would result in jail time would be carrying a firearm without a permit or physically hurting another person, including a family member. It seems like any form of violence is considered a serious offense. Yes, that is correct. Other serious offenses are bribing a government official, selling, using, or transporting illegal drugs, and driving a vehicle under the influence of a substance, such as drugs, alcohol, and medications. Getting caught doing any of these may result in the person going to jail. I see. Are there more? A few more examples are making, sharing, or owning photos of naked children, being married to more than one person, forcing others into marriage, making unwanted sexual remarks or touching a person sexually, having sex with children, and practicing female genital mutilation. These are all serious offenses. You said that family violence is illegal in Canada. Is hitting a spouse something that might result in someone going to jail in Canada? Yes, all forms of family violence are illegal in Canada. This could include violence toward any family members, such as a child, a partner's child, a partner, spouse, or an elder. It is also illegal to control someone's personal documents, such as passports or a person's permanent resident card, or to misuse the money of other family members. I understand that it is bad to hurt people and control important documents of other people, including family members. Moving to a new country is very stressful. What if someone lashes out during an especially difficult moment? Even when there is stress, it is important to remember that family violence is illegal in Canada. We have to be able to control stress and frustrations during difficult moments. What about yelling at a family member? Can a person also go to jail for getting in a verbal fight? A person cannot go to jail just for getting in an argument. But verbal and emotional abuse are illegal, especially if it involves threatening someone or intimidating them. This is abuse, and it is illegal. Sometimes my spouse and I argue. Are there any laws about how spouses should be treated in Canada? Yes. The same laws I have outlined about family violence apply to spouses. Hitting or killing anyone, including a family member, even as a way to try to save the family's honor, is prohibited in Canada. It is also important to remember that it is illegal to force anyone, including a family member such as a spouse, to perform sexual acts. What if either person decides they no longer want to be married? In such cases, either spouse can apply for a divorce. 
What happens to children when a couple divorces in Canada? In Canada, only a court can grant a divorce. After the divorce, both parents must financially support their children and come to an agreement about their care. I am glad taking care of children is important in Canada. I have a friend who immigrated here with her spouse who was thinking of divorce because her spouse is abusive. How would that affect their immigration status? Excellent question. In Canada, no one has to stay in an abusive relationship in order to keep their immigration status. A newcomer also does not have to live with a sponsor, including a spouse or partner, to keep their permanent resident status. Really? So, if someone's spouse is abusive, they can leave the marriage without losing their immigration status and having to leave Canada? That is correct. And it is important to know that if anyone is being threatened, harmed in any way, or are fleeing from violence, they can always call 911 for the police in an emergency. Anyone can also call 211 or visit 211.ca for social and health services. Is there somewhere safe to stay in case of a difficult situation? There are shelters that provide a safe place to stay. Anyone in need can visit sheltersafe.ca. S H E L T E R S A F E dot C A for instructions to find a safe place to stay and get the support they may need. Ah, oh, that is good to know. There are also freedoms that people in Canada enjoy. People can legally change gender and decide who and when to marry if over 18, including someone of the same gender. I see. People also have a right to terminate a pregnancy. They can have children, including single people and same-sex couples. Interesting. People also can legally use cannabis and alcohol if they are adults and practice any religion or no religion at all. People have the freedom to get medical assistance to die if a person has an incurable illness, disease, or disability and are suffering. This is called medical assistance in dying. Also, all people in Canada have the right to protest peacefully against the government. So people who are 18 years old or older are considered an adult? That is a good question. The age when a person is considered an adult in Canada is 18 or 19 years old. It differs from one province or territory to another. I see. Being an adult comes with many freedoms in Canada. You are right. You also are not expected to do these things or even agree with them just because you live in Canada. But you do have to respect that people have the right to do these things, even if you disagree with them. Thank you, officer, for answering all our questions. It is very helpful. You are very welcome. Please remember, these laws exist for the safety and protection of all people in Canada, including you. So follow the law and stay safe. End of Dialogue Unit